In this week's podcast, I got Dr. David Jockers to stop by and talk about ketogenic diets. Now, Dr. David Jockers is a maximized living doctor. He specializes in corrective care chiropractic. He's a nutritionist, exercise physiologist, and a certified strength and conditioning specialist. He currently owns and operates Exodus Health Center in Kensensaw, Georgia, and he's also the host of Supercharge Your Health on Atlanta Fate Talk radio show 970 AM every Saturday. Now, the reason I got Dr. David Jockers on the show today is to talk about the ketogenic diet. Now, a lot of you probably heard about this diet and are kind of confused what it is and how can it benefit you. Now, through my experience and my practice, I've I'm personally on the ketogenic diet. I absolutely love it. I have seen so many people benefit from this. And that's why I got David on the show today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. But before we actually begin today's show, I just want to make sure if you have the opportunity to head over to amirrosic.com. This is where you get my exclusive interviews such as this where I bring you every single week. All you got to do is head over to amirrosic.com. Enter your name and email address and you receive my exclusive content every single week. Now on with the show. And we got another episode of the Optimal Health Show. We actually got a really cool show today because not too many doctors are actually doing this and they should. <laughs> we got a really special doctor. His name is Dr. David Jockers and he specializes in stuff that you probably heard of but really don't know too much about it. So I'd like you to please give a, a round of applause for our good friend, Dr. David. How are you doing, brother? Hey, thanks a lot, Amir. Really glad to be on. And uh, you're absolutely right. A lot of doctors should be doing this. Great way to reach the public. And you know, doctor means teacher. The greatest thing a doctor can do for the lay people is teach them, educate them, especially if you have something great to offer that will help them. Definitely. And so obviously through your education in medical school, they didn't teach you this about, wait a second, what is a ketogenic diet? So what, how did you stumble across this information and what really got you interested in using a ketogenic diet to help people out? Yeah, great question. You know, I'm, I'm thankful for my, my education, the nine years and uh, $250,000 that I spent on, uh, on college education. <laughs> I'm thankful for it, but I really didn't learn anything about how to get people well. Mm -hmm. What I did learn was a good vocabulary that then allowed me to analyze research and to look at different things and, and to, to learn strategies to help people. And uh, so, you know, we don't learn anything about this in school. However, you know, my, my background, I, I watched my grandfather, you know, here he was, he, he was diabetic, but, you know, and taking a medication for that. But other than that, he felt great. I mean, he was enjoying his retirement, playing golf every single day, watching what he ate, doing the best he could to live a healthy lifestyle with what he knew. And uh, he developed metastatic skin cancer. His skin cancer had spread throughout his body, destroyed his bones, broke his arm, opening a door, Ended up, you know, on, on chemotherapy, radiation, the whole route, and uh, six months later dropped over 100 pounds, just rotted away in a nursing home. And uh, it was at that point, I mean, I just, I realized, hey, I, I wanted to help people. I wanted to make sure I could do whatever I possibly could to, to end needless suffering. And, you know, fortunately, God led me on a route to, uh, you know, going into chiropractic college and um, learning everything I could about nutrition and natural health. And a ketogenic diet, to me, it just made so much sense. I could see what sugar was doing in my own life. In fact, I actually developed at uh, 27, opening my, my health clinic, um, living obviously when, when you're in $200,000 of debt and uh, you're opening a business with no business experience and living in my office and doing everything I could to meet people and, and to help people. There's a lot of fear in my life and my, my nutrition was better than most, but certainly wasn't where it should have been. And uh, I actually developed skin cancer myself and uh, right on my nose, right on my face, wow. and I could see it every single day. And uh, you know, I knew that's what killed my my grandfather. And without going to a dermatologist or another medical doctor or anything like that, I uh, I just I knew if I changed my lifestyle, I just had faith that my body would get well. And that's exactly what I did. You know, I took all the sugar out of my diet, and um, what I noticed was my energy improved. Um, I slept better. My mental clarity went through the roof. My productivity got significantly better. The, uh, the, the carcinoma that I had on my nose completely went away and my life completely transformed and uh, I felt amazing with it. And so as I studied more about it, I ran into a, a book called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease by uh, Dr. Thomas Seyfried and great book. And he just went into detail. He really gave me the literature that I needed to, to really understand the, the mechanism. And, uh, you know, fortunately, 
with my health clinic, we constantly are probably you know, right now, I mean, every month we probably have five new advanced cancer cases. So people that are motivated to make lifestyle changes to get well. And so I've had the opportunity to work with a lot of different individuals all over the world, really, um, and utilizing this approach. And we've just seen dramatic things. I mean, I have one gentleman um, that reversed literally a five centimeter tumor in his brain and within a year it was completely gone. And, uh, you know, just seeing what, when you see things like that, you just become convicted in, um, in this approach. And I've seen it work for, for, for a number of different people. And I was just telling you, I just had a lady um, today actually tell me, so she had metastatic breast cancer and it was spreading throughout her body. And the doctors basically said they needed to take out the breast and they were um, really urgent with this desire to give her a mastectomy. <clears throat> and I said, look, I said, just give it a couple weeks, just all the sugar. We started doing intermittent fasting, different protocols and strategies. And uh, six weeks later, just had, just had a scan done. And uh, they said that cancer hadn't grown and it shrunk about 30%. So, you know, just amazing stuff like that. Lives transformed. It's awesome. That's amazing. And uh, let's try to clear up some uh, kind of like uh, issues going on right now. Because a lot of people get confused and really don't know exactly what is a ketogenic diet. There's so many different definitions yeah. about it. So can you explain to us in your own words, what do you consider to be a ketogenic diet? Yeah, ketogenic diet is basically we want to take sugars and grains, anything that metabolizes into sugar out of the diet. Okay, we want to keep our carbohydrate levels in general low. So for the average individual, really about under 50 carbohydrates in a day, particularly keeping out high sugar fruits, um, as well as starches and processed sugar, of course. So we want to keep all of that out of the system. We build meals around good fats, antioxidants, clean protein, fiber, and fermented foods. Now, if somebody has a very fast growing cancer, we're gonna do some extreme things as far as getting them into ketosis as fast as possible. But for the average individual that just wants to live a cancer killing lifestyle, and, and, and Amir, to just uh, to, to, to explain that real quick, Reality is with cancer, we're either building it or we're killing it. So I was 27 and even though I was, er, everybody that would know me would say, well, he's probably the healthiest person I know, I had cancer. And just like most, most people, even a lot of the listeners on the show right now, I mean, you have active cancer growing in your body and you have a choice with your, with your daily lifestyle decisions. You're either building cancer or you're killing it. We don't want to wait until we get the tumor to start killing it. We want to kill it every single day. So why so, why is the ketogenic diet so beneficial when yep. dealing with cancer? Well, great, great question. You know, the reason why is that cancer depends upon sugar. So it has to metabolize sugar. I mean, depending on the cancer cell, depending on the, the, the cell of origin, it's going to have anywhere from 10 to up to 70 times more insulin receptors. Insulin is the critical hormone that brings sugar into the cells. Um, on its on its cell surface membrane, and so because of that, I mean, it, cancer thrives on anaerobic glucose based metabolism, mm. and so if you starve out the glucose, cancer is an organism; it needs fuel to survive, and so if you starve it out, it can't grow. And the other thing, the other amazing thing about cancer is it actually takes glucose and forms an antioxidant defense around around itself, so it actually protects itself. So the more sugar you give. You, you put into your system, the more antioxidant, the stronger the cancer becomes. When you starve it out, now it becomes vulnerable to free radical damage, free radical attack. In fact, one of the things that we do for advanced cancer cases is we do enzyme therapy using systemic enzymes. But the key is it's not going to work if we don't starve out the 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 fuel source exactly. for the cancer. Why don't we tell, why don't we tell our audience, uh, I'm not too sure if they know this, but I'm, as soon as they find this out right now, they hear it from you, they're going to be shocked is how do we actually screen people for cancer? How do we screen people for it? Yeah. Like what kind of testing do we do? Like what's involved? Well, the mainstream medical model you're yeah, talking about? Yeah. 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 We do like high invasive radiation tests, things like mammograms. We do, I mean, prostate exams. The reality is none of these tests, prostate exams, colonoscopies, mammograms, number one, they're highly invasive. They're stressful on the body. So they actually create stress um, and they actually create free radical damage and they actually push you closer to cancer when you get those tests on number one. But number two is at best, 
they can't actually determine if you have a cancer until there's already four to 10 billion cancer cells. Mm. So on average, that's typically eight to 15 years of cancer cell development before the tumor even gets that large for them to see it. So we're actually, even though that's called early detection, it's called, they actually call it prevention. They're not really preventing anything. They're just finding it after it's been developing for eight to 15 years, maybe, mo maybe longer. Like with my grandfather, his melanoma, it, nobody picked it up, right? It wasn't until he literally broke his arm opening a door before they knew he had something going on. And the oncologist that worked with him, he said the cancer had to have started at least 20 years earlier. And my grandfather said when he was 20, so over 50 years earlier, he was in the Korean War, stationed in Hawaii, mm. had his shirt off, got severely sunburnt, blisters, all kinds of stuff. The oncologist said, yep, that's, that's when it started. And, and the crazy thing is my grandfather, he was in the military, so he had free health care. So he went in every year like a good soldier, had all his blood work done, all the tests. Nobody ever picked it up. It wasn't until it had literally metastasized throughout his body, went into his bones, destroyed his body before anybody knew um, he had it. So if we're going to count on typical medical testing, that's a worst strategy. That's, that's absolute worst strategy. Number one is doing that, getting those tests every year actually only promotes cancer growth in our body. Plus, it really doesn't do anything to actually prevent cancer. So we've got to live a lifestyle that kills cancer every single day. Definitely. So it's about preventative care instead of That's treatment right. plans. Yeah. Yeah. Right. True health promotion is the way I like to call it. Prevention. Unfortunately, prevention and wellness are, um, you know, those are words that are corrupted in our society. Yeah. You know, they've got abortion clinics that are called wellness, right? It has nothing to do with wellness. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And so it's, it's, it's really about health promotion. We want to promote a body that's strong, healthy, and vibrant every single day. Again, we're either building health or we're building disease. Every thought we think, every food that we put in our body, the way that we sleep every night, the way that we carry ourselves, breathe, move, all of that stuff's either promoting health or it's promoting disease. You're going one way or the other. Definitely. And I really want to touch base again back on the Otto Warburg effect with the cancer yes. cells and the sugar. I want people to really understand this and to digest this information that cancer feeds on glucose and when you have yep. cancer like you're mentioning dave you have 10 times more uh you're mentioning insulin receptors on the at a minimum yep on at the a minimum actual cell at a minimum out on the cell at a minimum exactly at a minimum some cancers like brain cancers they have 60 to 70 times the amount of insulin receptors so some of them are gobbling up sugar even faster than others the faster the cancer the faster the growth of the cancer the more insulin receptors so the only way to shut down growth is really one of two things, S massive surgery to pull the whole thing out, mm. which really never gets to the cause because you still have poor metabolism. You still have, um, you still have fermentation, uh, anaerobic metabolism that's only going to grow cancer and chronic disease in other areas. Or you actually shut down the fuel source that feeds the cancer, which is getting the sugar and the things that break down into sugar out of the body. That's, that's the critical thing. Yeah, and the Warburg effect, I mean, Otto Warburg, a genius, you know, just a man, a man way ahead of his time. And unfortunately, you know, the unfortunate reality is that um, sugar-free diets don't feed the chemical companies. You know, they don't, um, they don't support chemical companies. They don't make any money off that. No, not at all. And what's your take then on the whole chemotherapy approach? Yeah, well, you know, chemotherapy has a role. I mean, it's, there's, there's a place for it. Um, however, personally, my personal take is I personally would never get it for myself or, or a family member. Um, you know, I'd never fault somebody if they want to take an approach with that. I've seen cases where, where it buys people time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's a time and a place for that when somebody is, is really sick. But, you know, the reality is chemotherapy is, is extreme. I mean, it's an extreme therapy that destroys our body and, and creates, in, in some cases, irreversible damage to the system. And if you were to do natural therapies, extreme natural therapies, you can get the same effect, if not better, and in fact, in some cases, extraordinarily better without the damage and actually and benefit your entire body. And so, um, so, you know, I would personally, that's my take on it. Um, there's a role for it, but, uh, but it should be a very limited role. Definitely. I couldn't agree more. I tell people the analogy is like atomic bomb. You're dosing yep. your body with radiation in hopes of killing the cancer, but at the same time, exactly. killing healthy cells. Right. Exactly. Just like when we're working with Iran or any of these other countries, you know, out there that are causing conflict, the last thing we want to do is drop a bomb. A exactly. time and a place, but the last thing we'd ever want to do is that. It should be our last 
scenario. Exactly. So then, like, people probably then ask this, hey, guys, well, I thought I need sugar to live, or I thought I need sugar to survive. Can we explain to our audience about there's a mechanism when you go on a ketogenic diet, your body starts yep. producing something known as ketones? Exactly. Yeah, keto, I mean, your body can thrive off of ketones. Unfortunately, ketones have a they have a negative connotation in our society because there's something called ketoacidosis with people that have extreme diabetes. And this is for which, type 1 diabetics, though. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, type 1 diabetics and just people that have type 2 to the point where, um, I mean, they can't get any sugar into the cells. Mm. And so it's people with extreme metabolic diseases that can develop that, not individuals, not typical individuals. And so ketone bodies are absolutely amazing. In fact, they're a preferred fuel source for your body. Your body can actually run longer, stronger, and healthier utilizing them. And so ideally, when we're trying to kill cancer, somebody that has, has active cancer in their body, we actually want to get the blood sugar levels. One thing I tell them to do is to actually get a blood sugar unit that they can get. They can test their blood sugar and their ketone levels. So they get um, they like a, a glu glucometer? Yeah, they can get a glucometer. And they can get um, a little meter also for their ketones, mm. um, a urine test. And uh, we actually want to get their, their, their blood sugar levels between 55 and 65 milligrams per deciliter. If you've ever had a fasting blood sugar test in the morning after fasting, and it's regularly over 90, mm -hmm. that's a sign, even though medical doctors say, okay, it looks okay, that's actually a sign that you've got active cancer growing in your body. I mean, you're, you're, you have got a metabolic disease. Um, it should regularly be around 70 or so for us. When it's when we're trying to starve out cancer, we want to get it down around 55 to 65, mm. and we want to get the ketone levels up to four to seven. So when I'm working with people with cancer, I'll ask them on a regular basis, where are your ketones at? Where are your ketones at? And I want to know that that number is getting up there around four to seven. Make sure that their metabolics, met, their metabolism is making the switch. Somebody that's got diabetes, it's going to take a little bit longer. I mean, it's just their body is metabolically damaged. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer for those individuals. But, uh, you know, we definitely, using the right strategies and programs, we can get it to that point. And again, ketones, something that our brain can utilize as energy and uh, our whole body really can. And, and so uh, we can function very well off metabolizing fatty acids. So can yep. you explain to our audience exactly how are ketones made and how do we use it better than actual uh, glucose? Yeah, so ketones are made from fatty acid metabolism. So as we metabolize fats, we can't turn fatty acids into sugar. We can turn sugar into fat, our metabolism can, it does all the time, but we can't turn fatty acids into sugar. Fat though is really our primary, it should be our primary energy source. And so when we switch our metabolism around, and this is the way that you know that, um, this is how you know your body is what's called fat adapted. And when you're fat adapted, it's a beautiful thing. You are able to fast. If you can fast for 16, 18, even 24 hours without really feeling hungry and actually keep your blood sugar stays stable, you feel mentally clear, that is one of the greatest freedoms you have in your life. It's amazing. And this is what happens when your body becomes fat adapted and very good at utilizing ketone bodies, which is just, I don't want to go into the biochemistry, but it's a metabolism of, it's when your, your, your body breaks down fatty acids, produces these things that your brain and your body can, can utilize for energy. Then, um, then you're able to go long periods without eating because your body really doesn't know the difference between eating a, you know, a stick of organic grass fed butter or just taking a pound of fat off of your body and utilizing it for energy. And it's a beautiful thing. You're fat adapted. Your blood sugar stays very, very stable, which means your energy or mental clarity is going to stay stable. Your stress hormones are going to stay stable and it's low stress and anti-inflammatory on your body. And it's, it's a beautiful life like this. It really is. Definitely. And so in conjunction with the ketogenic diet, are you using any other types of modalities or say supplements or something else to help oh, yeah. people uh, eliminate cancer? Yeah, without a doubt. And so, um, you know, if somebody comes in with active cancer, we have a whole supplement regimen. So basically, we're going to use antioxidants like uh, I'm a big fan of astaxanthin mm. which is an antioxidant that you find in um, in wild Alaskan salmon it's what actually gives them their pink color and you think about salmon they're the strongest species I mean they, they can swim upstream against the rapids jump out of the water and it's the astaxanthin along with omega-3 fatty acids we do a combination there omega-3 fats 
So cancer, one of the factors that we, that that's found in cancer is um is a omega six dominance on the, on the cell membrane. So we, we want to get the omega threes in there. We want to get fat soluble antioxidants like so why acid. Don't, why don't we explain then to the audience about the whole thing with the omega three? Oh, sorry, the omega sixes and arachidonic yeah. acid. I just want to make a little quick picture. So guys, I want you to mentally picture this for a second. Your cell is made of the lipid bilayer. And these are, you should have healthy fats and they should look like a donut. And when you have like yep. elevated omega-6s and arachidonic acid, your cell becomes rusted and it can't communicate with your other cells. So what David's talking about right now here, using azazantan and using omega-3s, we're trying to make your cells into like a, like a jellyfish. It's nice and fluid. That's a great analogy. Exactly. We want fluidity. That allows for good hormone signaling. When you have healthy hormone signaling, it's going to quiet down stress in your system. And that's really what it's all about is, is minimizing stress in your system and allowing your body to adapt effectively to the demands of the environment. Rigid cells can't adapt effectively. Fluid cells or jelly-like cells are able to adapt effectively. They're able to create the genetic changes you need to adapt to, an, to your environment. And that's, that's critical. So antioxidants, omega-3s, really key. So obviously making nutrition changes, getting rid of anything that's high omega-6. So, so um, canola oil, soybean, safflower, corn oil, obviously all the processed foods and oils, getting rid of grain-fed meat, commercialized meat, and instead building our diet around good fats. So avocados, extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil, um, you know, with the ketogenic cleanse, we do lots of coconut oil because it's so powerful for the cell membranes. Um, you know, supplementing with things like fish oil combined with astaxanthin, um, also utilizing grass-fed beef, mm. um, grass-fed raw dairy. Um, so when cows eat 100% grass, they actually bioaccumulate antioxidants, something called carnosine in their, in their tissue. And that's extremely neuroprotective and chemoprotective for your body, as well as CLA that, that they have. High levels of CLA, conjugated linoleic acid, really powerful anti-carcinogen, powerful nutrient that helps us burn guess fat. Where, guess where awesome. else you find CLA? Only one other place. Mother's Grass breast, breast yeah, milk, yeah. right? Makes so, sense, right? Exactly. Nature knows best, right? That's absolutely the truth, yep. So, so yeah, we want foods like that, organic eggs, you know, things like this. That, that's really what we want. Also, we use, um, we use systemic enzymes. Mm. And so enzymes are real powerful. When you, eat, when you use enzymes with food, they act like digestive enzymes. And so it's beneficial because you use less digestive energy as you're, metabolize, as you're breaking out food. Less, less energy you need to use for digestion, more energy for healing. That's also why intermittent fasting is so powerful. And I'll talk about that next. But when we take enzymes outside of mealtimes, then they become what's called systemic enzymes, and they actually have a whole body anti-inflammatory effect. And one of the things they do, even though you can't market a supplement in our society in, in America as, in a sense, a, a cancer fighter or something like that, they actually have a very chemoprotective effect, and they will actually destroy abnormal tissue in your system. So anybody like, for example, I sprained my ankle a couple of weeks ago. And so I used high dose enzymes and I was able to be, you know, back and walking in, in literally three days when uh, it probably would have taken me, you know, two weeks to, to get back to walking and running if I didn't use that. And same thing with cancer. I mean, it, it just, it, th those things will get around a cancer cell and just attack it, destroy it. And so the, the key really, uh, what I tell people is we got to starve it out and then we got to provide the natural source, of, natural agents that will hunt out abnormal growths and destroy those things and just enhance our, na our natural immunity, um, which, which is what's doing that on a regular basis for us. So those are two of the strategies we use. I couldn't, along agree, I couldn't agree more because you're mentioning the whole cancer fact and cancer is obviously high, you know, our cells become mutated, creating more ROS, yep. reactive oxygen species. And cancer just doesn't come out of there, out of the blue. Obviously, it's developed throughout your lifetime. And yep. your pancreas is working overdrive. Your enzymes are deficient. And most people are walking around with pretty much zero HCL, hydrochloric yep. acid, right? Yep. So it makes total perfect sense when you support the body with systemic enzymes and pancreatic enzymes. And yep. so your body has less of a stress on it so it can repair, right? Absolutely. I mean, that's the key. You got to quiet down the stress response. As long as stress response is high, we're going to have problems. And that, and that takes us really into the next thing. I mean, we got we to gotta repair the gut. Mm. 
So cancer and candida have a very strong correlation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So most people, because we drink chlorinated water, we bathe in chlorinated water, um, we've, we've either taken antibiotics growing up or most people are eating antibiotics every single day in commercialized meat. Because we're so inundated with things that destroy our natural gut flora, most of us, I would probably say 90 to 98% of Americans have damaged and altered microflora in their gut. And every day they walk around with that, they have chronic stress. And so because of that, we've got to quiet down that stress. So we've got to provide probiotics, fermented foods, things like that, that actually help mm -hmm. provide a healthy environment in our gut. The other key thing with that is intermittent fasting. And this is something I practice every single day. And it is extraordinary, amazing for the brain, amazing for athletic performance, recovery, and for disease prevention. I will go, I usually eat between a six to eight hour eating window every single day. So we have a building phase and a cleansing phase. Our building phase is a time between our first meal and our last meal. So if you ate at 8 a.m. and you finished at 8 p.m., that would be a 12 hour building phase. Mm -hmm. And then you would have a resulting 12 hour cleansing phase. Really what we need is at least a two to one building to cleansing phase. So I'm a, for me, I usually eat my meals between one and 7 p.m. And I'll do inner, I'll fast. I'll just drink lots and lots of water. I might make like a, a super greens drink with like celery, kale, and ginger. That really doesn't count as a meal at all because there's really no calories, no net effect on our glucose or anything like that. Um, so I might do something like that. I'll use antioxidant extracts in my water, like fresh squeezed lemon and things like that. But I'm just hydrating and cleansing during those other periods. And your mental clarity, you will see, I mean, not only does your body get very efficient utilizing ketones, um, and again, going into the state of fat adaption, like I was talking about, but your mental clarity, your energy levels will be extraordinary. Your human growth hormones, your quintessential anti-aging hormone that helps you burn fat, build muscle, and reverse aging goes through the roof. Um, and you feel incredible doing this. And that's part of the cancer killing lifestyle. And people that have advanced cancer, I try to get them doing 20 to 24 hour fasts oftentimes very quickly. Mm. If they have diabetes, we're, we're using coconut oil throughout the day because they won't be able to do that. But if they don't, I'm trying to get them doing really deep fasts as quickly as possible. We do a vegetable a vegetable broth or, or we could use grass-fed beef broth, things like that. Some of these types of things to restore the gut flora, allow the gut to heal, reduce stress on the body, and on top of that, um, get us into ketosis as, as quickly as possible. Fascinating. Are you implementing any high bolus dosages of probiotics? Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, sometimes, uh, obviously fermented foods and fermented raw grass-fed dairy I, I'm always a fan of, of whole food sources, real mm -hmm. fermented mm -hmm. sources, number one. But uh, yeah, but yeah, I mean, we definitely want to get anywhere from 500 billion to 1 trillion CFUs on a daily basis. And we can do it through foods. We can do it through supplements. But uh, the combination works great. Awesome. Yeah. Have you ever looked into, say, using uh, high dosages of glutathione or magnesium yeah. as an uh, IV therapeutic approach? Yeah, absolutely. You know, personally, in my, my personal practice, it's against my, my scope of practice to do IV injections and things like that. However, very advanced cases, I do refer them out to a clinic that can do that. And it's mm -hmm. powerful. The, the effects are amazing. Now, what I tell people on a regular basis is to utilize, you want to boost glutathione every day. And there's whole food sources you can use. There's also supplements you can use mm -hmm. that have glutathione precursors in it. Um, I have a supplement that I sell at my office that has precursors the body utilizes, but also things like raw grass-fed dairy. That's the number one whole food-based source. You can get things like non-denatured, never been pasteurized, whey protein from grass-fed cows, fantastic source of glutamic acid, glycine, cysteine, your critical uh, precursors to make glutathione. Also, um, raw cheese from grass-fed cows. Mm. So you always wanna make sure it's from grass-fed cows, it's raw. Now you're going to have, again, those, those amino acids, lots of sulfur, garlic, onions, broccoli, kale, all our cruciferous vegetables have a lot of, lot of sulfur, uh, onions, garlic, all those things help boost glutathione levels in your body. So again, whole food sources as well as supplements. Yep. Fantastic. And 
obviously I know you do this. You you most definitely tell your your patients that sleep is also a crucial part of their healing procedure. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Got to be sleeping. I mean, typically for average individuals, we need between seven to nine hours based on your stress levels. Anybody that's that's got advanced cancer, I'm telling them 10 to 12 hours, yeah. 10 to 12 hours of sleep. I mean, you need that extra rest. And it's just so critical that melatonin that you secrete when you're sleeping or that actually makes you drowsy is a a one of the most powerful natural anti-carcinogens mm -hmm. and your body produces it itself you really don't want to supplement with that on a regular basis maybe occasionally if you're having trouble sleeping but you don't want to supplement with melatonin as a regular go-to you want to just get your body producing it at, at a high level so having healthy sleep cycles going to bed at the same time every night is one of the most powerful things you can do having a ritual that you do to help you relax so that way you can sleep well um priceless priceless Definitely. and you know what if, if we develop a disciplined and committed life to building health mm -hmm. we can save so much time money and energy <laughs> when it comes to healthcare and natural resources i could agree more and just people need to understand and prioritize their health yep. first and i find it i kind of find it funny over here at least over here it's kind of like a you know socialist type of healthcare system that people yep. think it's free but i'm like it's not free you're paying your taxes towards it nothing's free <laughs> nothing's free exactly <laughs> right and then the service they get is horrible and the type of approach is horrible i'm like you really calculate the cost of a how much money you're spending on say even regular NSAIDs or medication per year and yep. divert that money to living a natural life we're not telling you to yep. do backflips we're not telling you to learn something new. We're telling you to eat food that's healthy, that tastes amazing, that can guarantee your body's uh, a healthy environment to survive. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you know, I, I think this is um, this is this is the uh, the downfall of mankind. Is most people are living their life with a just basically motivated by doing things that are easiest and most pleasing, whatever's mm -hmm. convenient and pleases their sensations in the moment. That's what we're all gravitated towards. However, you know, real disciplined life is extremely enjoyable. Extre I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing. You reach entirely new levels in your life, but you've got to be willing to delay gratification. Yeah. Got to be willing to delay gratification. That's one of the most powerful factors for success. I couldn't agree more. So say somebody comes to your office and your, your clinic and they have cancer. Maybe they've been screened or maybe they have a suspicion. Who knows? Is there a certain, you mentioned earlier, you have a protocol, like how hard is it for someone to switch over to a ketogenic diet? Is it just like bang, boom, I'm okay? Or is there is a certain like uh, resistance? You know, it's all about their psychology. I tell people that right from the start. It's, you know, the first essential, I, I teach a five essential program. The first essential is maximizing our mindset. Mm. You know, somebody that is truly, for example, I had a gentleman in my office and he had had a bladder cancer and because he had these tumors in his bladder and uh, he was having blood in his urine, the doctors did um, radiation therapy in there. Um, and then they, they actually injected TB, so a, a, a potent, uh, very virulent virus to create antibodies into his system. They injected it through his penis into his wow. bladder. Holy and as he was telling me this, I... Um, you know, obviously had the typical male effect when you start visualizing that. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> and um, I'm thinking, that's exactly right. We would do whatever it takes yeah. when it comes down to it, right? And so we should be, will doing, be willing to do whatever it takes to make sure it never happens, you know? And so making lifestyle changes, changing our diet, from my psychology, it's easy. However, it depends on the individual. I mean, I had one family, a child with brain cancer, you know, they, their friends, they were actually referred into my office, a friend of theirs, um, re completely reverse brain cancer doing my strategies. Yet when I was breaking down the nutrition plan and the lifestyle they had to do, the mother, and it's an 18 year old boy, mm -hmm. he, he came in in a wheelchair, um, advanced brain cancer. As I was explaining the lifestyle that they would need to follow, she just started breaking down in tears and, and left my office. And I really? said, I asked her husband, I said, did I say something offensive? And he's like, no, no, you're not doing anything wrong. Went on, gave them the customized plan, but they decided that they weren't going to do it. 
he ended up passing away a month later. Oh and so they just didn't have the psychology. They didn't have the emotional and mental fortitude to make changes. And so a great quote that I've heard is that the illiterate of the 21st century are not those who can't read and write, but those who can't learn something, then unlearn it and relearn something new. The ability to be adaptable and flexible and to be able to change is one of the most critical things in life. And I've seen people who, you know, off the bat, I would have said, you know what, this person's just not going to be motivated to do it. And they've surprised me with incredible things. And I've had other people I thought this person's, this, this person's fired up, they're going to do it. But they just had so many self-sabotaging behaviors and they weren't able to get a grip on them that they weren't able to do it. So it really depends on the mental fortitude of the individual. And people are always, my patients are always saying, I'm trying to get this person with cancer or this person or this person into your office. Mm. I'm talking to this person. And I'm always encouraging them to do that. But you know, I always try to get them to bring them to one of my workshops or my or my patient orientation because I think, you know, my job, and I tell my staff this all the time, you know, the reason why God put me on the planet is number one is to really help educate people mm -hmm. with these strategies, but more importantly than educate them is really to help inspire people. And so I know as a doctor, I mean, the greatest thing I can do is really help inspire people to, to do what it takes to get well. Yeah. And if they're inspired, nothing will stop them. That's the, that's the whole thing. Forget about being a doctor or anything. It comes back to being a leader, an example, yep. right? Leader and a coach. You got it. That's right. Your actions speak louder than your words. That's right. And you know, it doesn't matter what your title is. You know, being a doctor gives me a little bit more credibility, but the reality is it doesn't matter what your title is. You can be a leader and a coach if you're playing sports, if you're doing a, you know podcasts and, and shows like this right here. I mean, you are making... In fact, Amir, you are making a bigger difference than, you know, all the doctors in your hot in the local hospital. You really are by sharing knowledge and inspiration through a show like this. You know, all those guys are doing is, pat, you know, giving drugs left and right, doing radical surgeries, but not really teaching people the necessary steps they need to take to get well. Hey, man, it's all about sharing your knowledge and wisdom out there and really benefiting people. I always tell any of my clients or my friends or family, anyone who's listening right now that if you go to your doctor and I was just talking about this, you go to your doctor and say, hey doc, I just figured out that, or I found some new information that omega-3 may be helpful for my cholesterol, for example. And if that doctor looks at you and slams the door, which many do, right? I think it's really time for you to find somebody that really cares about I agree. you. I agree, yep. Yeah, your doctor should be your advocate. Should be really be your coach more than anything. And uh, they should be open-minded to the approaches that you want to take. And so, absolutely. I, you know, I always tell my clients, you know, I, I deal with a lot of people that, ha that are on antidepressants and blood pressure, you know, just every kind of drug. And some of the drugs you can come off quickly, some you need to wean off of. And I always tell them, you know, you got to talk to your doctor about it if they see an active doctor. And I say, you know what, tell them exactly what you're doing. I'm making nutrition changes. I'm getting my spine adjusted. I am exercising. You know, I'm thinking better. You know, I'm doing all these types of things. I need your help. Mm -hmm. I want to come off these medications. I want to come off of them in three to six months or whatever, whatever your goal is. Let's develop a strategy. Mm -hmm. And they should say, you know what? That's all. They should be giving you high fives. And the reality is they should be your code. They should be like, this is awesome. Yeah, here's what we'll do. You know, we'll do your blood work here every, after six weeks. You know, they should give you set up a strategy for you. And if you find a doctor like that, keep them because that's exactly what you need in your life. And if you don't have a doctor like that, get rid of them and look for somebody else. 100%. Even now these days, you don't even necessarily need a physical doctor. I know, like myself and many other doctors I know, uh, you can do online consultation. For example, someone yep. can reach out to you, David, and be like, hey, you yep. know, I need some help. And they send you maybe some uh, laboratory reports and you can exactly. work that way. So don't just think in the physical realm. The, right. the world of preventative uh, care, preventative medicine has expanded to be virtual. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, especially with things like Skype, you know, like you and I are talking right now. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the kind of technology we have nowadays, I mean, you can work with somebody that, you know, and I think this is the biggest thing. You want somebody that really jives with your mm -hmm. philosophy, your approach to life. You know, you want, again, an inspiring figure, you know, and so I'm, I'm naturally gravitated to people that inspire me in different realms of my life. And that, those are the kind of people we want to work with, we want to support. So whatever realm it is, when it comes to healthcare, you want somebody that's inspiring, that shares your philosophy, that you can um, really work with to get the best results. And you don't need a doctor sitting right in front of you. You can use Skype, phone, 
email. I mean, there's so many different aspects now. I agree 100%. So if you had to sum up everything and give somebody your number one optimal health tip, what would it be? Something that, here you go, this one tip would greatly benefit you. <laughs> That's a tough question because there's so <laughs> many, right? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I again, I would say start with the mind. I mean, figure out what in life inspires you and make it a habit of being inspired every day. You don't want to leave your house in the morning without being inspired. I know for myself, going in to see patients on a regular basis, I do not want to walk in my office thinking about negative things, complaining or, you know, just just not not engaged. I want to be inspired. I want to be lifted up. I want to feel like I am changing and saving the world when I walk in there because when you do that, your whole life changes mm -hmm. and you make a huge difference in people's lives. So no matter what you do for a living, no matter what you know your obstacles are on a daily basis, make it a regular habit of being inspired before you leave your house. That's awesome, man. I couldn't agree anymore. All right, Dr. David, where can people reach you? Yeah, you can find more information about me on my website, drjockers, D-R-J-O-C-K-E-R-S.com. I've got a new book out called Supercharge Your Brain. It's really the most advanced strategies to radically improve your mood, your memory, and your mindset. So I take you through all the best superfoods for your brain. We, got, we have 32 different recipes, brain-boosting recipes. We talk about different exercises in there. We talk about something called neurobics, which is actually aerobics for your brain, different exercises, <laughs> different strategies to boost your brain. We talk about how music balances different hemispheres. Mm -hmm. There's so many advanced strategies in there. Really excited about it. I know it's, it's made a huge difference in my life. And, uh, you know, I really hope uh, some of your listeners here just grab that book because I know it'll make a big difference for them too. You can find it on Amazon. You can find it on my website. Over, I'll, I'll, guys, I'm going to put the in the show notes, a book will be there. I highly recommend go get it. I'm going to get it myself actually right now. That's You'll love a, it. That sounds amazing. Neurobics? Yep. I love it. Yeah, aerobics. <laughs> You'll love it. Love it. Yep. All right, Dr. David, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. I wish you a good day. Everybody out there, use this information, benefit yourself, and have an amazing week. Thanks a lot, Amir. Cheers. Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's episode with David Drockers. Now you know really how beneficial ketogenic diets are and how you can actually utilize it against cancer. Now I know it's a lot of information to take at once, but take it piece by piece and really benefit yourself. Now this show would not be possible if it wasn't for you. Now what I'm doing guys right now is offering once again my free seven week sleep course. All you gotta do is head over to helpmesleepsolution.com enter your name and email address and you'll receive my free seven week course. In this course, you'll learn how to optimize your sleep by controlling your environment, by taking certain supplements and diet. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's podcast with David Jockers and I'll catch you next week. Have an amazing week.